WikiLeaks has released another batch of emails allegedly taken from the personal account of Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta. How do you like your Gmail? Oh, uh, my lord. Hacked for a decade. That's not fun. The WikiLeaks release, not Move independently authenticated by NBC News, revealed Podesta's alleged response to a quote by Republican Senator Mark Kirk condemning the Iran nuclear deal. Kirk compared President Obama to former British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, who handed portions of Czechoslovakia over to Adolf Hitler. Podesta apparently replied slimly to that quote, yep. This latest dump Ouch. also includes an alleged email from Podesta to Hillary Clinton and a top aide urging Clinton to call prominent Latino politicians to ask for support. The email, which mentions former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson and former Called Energy him. Secretary Federico Called Pena, him an interesting name. features the subject line, needy Latinos and one easy call. Mm. Meanwhile, a purported 2011 email exchange features Podesta, current campaign communications director Jennifer Palmieri, and Center for American Progress fellow John Halpin reportedly discussing religion. Responded to comments by Halpin on media mogul Rupert Murdoch raising his kids as Catholic, Palmieri allegedly replied, I imagine they think it is the most socially acceptable, politically conservative religion. Their rich friends wouldn't understand if they became evangelicals. Here is Palmieri responding yesterday. I'm a Catholic. I don't recognize that email um, that, uh, that we saw. And this whole effort is led by the Russians. The Russians, ones that uh, orchestrated this hack, uh, we believe, as noted by the statement from the Director of National Intelligence, that they're also behind uh, the timing and manner of the leaks. And we are not going to do any more to comment or aid their efforts. The new emails also show members of the Clinton team viciously attacking Catholics and evangelicals. Did you see that? No, the press, the press doesn't want to report that one. That could be election changing. It's just the latest evidence of the hatred that the Clinton campaign has for everyday faithful Americans. House Speaker Paul Ryan also weighed in, Mika. Yes, he did, uh, releasing a statement that reads in part this, the Clinton campaign's disdain for the Catholic faith and Christian evangelicals is staggering. If anything, these statements reveal the Clinton campaign's hostile attitude toward people of faith in general. Casey, uh, how's the Clinton campaign handling uh, the, the, the steady stream of WikiLeaks uh, revelations coming out every day? I think it's worrisome in so much as they have no idea what the next round is yeah. going to bring. I mean, we've seen, you know, every day there's some new tidbit along the way. Uh, but I do think it's important to remember that, you know, this isn't a, a case of a whistleblower. This isn't somebody who went and said, hey, there's corruption going on, so I'm going to turn all these documents over to the proper authorities. I mean, this was a hack. This, da this data was stolen. Uh, I mean, I'm having fun, I mean, as a, a longtime political reporter, the Kremlinology on display in these emails is absolutely fascinating. We're sort of starting to figure out why Philippe Rhinus, for example, the top aide who played Donald Trump, uh, didn't end up getting a job on the campaign. There's all mm -hmm. this, you know, back and forth. I mean, you guys mentioned the risotto. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of incredible texture here that really paints a picture of how this campaign is working. Uh, but I think that, you know, you're going to see them start to focus again and again on what Jen Palmieri was saying there about the Russians. Roger Stone, uh, the Trump associate, also acknowledging that he has a quote unquote back channel with WikiLeaks uh, that, that they're also going to focus on, I think. You know, okay. Brian, Brian Fallon, who spokesperson for the Clinton campaign, went a step further. He said this is a modern day Watergate. Somebody broke in, stole our things, and he asked the question, what did Donald Trump know and when did he know it? So their, their approach is. They've been hacked by Russians, A, but B, they'd like to know if Donald Trump was somehow involved, involved. or if the Russians were at least doing it on Trump's behalf. Well, joining us now, chief political correspondent for CBN News, David Brody. Um, I guess, first of all, your reaction to these emails, especially about uh, Catholics and evangelicals. 
Well, uh, I think Paul Ryan said it was uh, staggering. Uh, I think in the evangelical world, it's like, uh, yeah, tell me something I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think evangelicals and conservative Catholics have known this for a long time. At least that's the talk around, uh, you know, the evangelical table about uh, how Democrats, especially liberal Democrats, feel about them. So no surprise here. Uh, I think the question becomes, how much does Donald Trump do with it? And clearly, he's starting to trot it out. I wanted to, wanted to ask you, David, what uh, about David? Uh, 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 Donald Trump's um, relationship uh, with evangelicals, conservative mm -hmm. Catholics, other people of faith, uh, it's, it's always seemed curious to a lot of people that evangelicals mm -hmm. have been supporters of Donald Trump. Any evidence of that support fraying uh, over the past week or so? little evidence of that. I know there's been a lot of uh, talk and a lot of media headlines about what the Christian Post has said and a few other uh, outlets as well. And uh, clearly there is some work to do within the evangelical community and Donald Trump would uh, be wise to engage even more with the evangelical community because of some of this. Uh, but the reality is most evangelicals, uh, even if they have to hold their nose a little tighter, will go to the polls uh, for Donald Trump. I don't think there's, a qu there's yet any question about it. Because and, can yeah. you explain why that is? Because that's what a lot of people say. Well, sure. hey, how could evangelicals ever vote for Donald Trump? What's the answer We're to that? Right. I, I understand why people are, are thinking that. Look, here's the deal, Joe, and I wrote a column about this just a day or two ago. Uh, if you've got, in evangelical world, if you've got two immoral candidates, they, and even if you think Donald Trump's not doing some things that are morally uh, upright, uh, and you've got Hillary Clinton, so now you're faced with this choice of immoral versus immoral, what do you do? Well, the tiebreaker, in evangelical world at least, is the next 50 years of potential 5-4 Supreme Court decisions, and, and it's beyond that. Uh, you know, they, they believe in evangelical world, Joe, as you know, grace is sufficient. Uh, there, there is quite a bit of grace in the evangelical world, so Donald Trump should be really thanking his lucky stars that if any uh, block of voters is going to give him some grace, it'll be evangelicals, because they know all about that, because the last time I checked, Jesus came down to this world and gave grace to all of us if we accept it. Uh, David, it's yeah. Nick Confessori. Uh, so yesterday, mm -hmm. I think it was, we saw Jerry Falwell Jr. and said that um, you, know, you don't actually have to share someone's values to vote for them. And I wonder mm -hmm. if that's an argument that will have a lot of water with evangelical voters. Yeah, I mean, I think so. And I, I think, once again, if you look at the kind of totality of all of this, you know, Donald Trump talks about uh, repealing the Johnson Amendment. Donald Trump talks about, uh, you know, this idea of fighting how Christians are under attack in the public square. You know, you're not hearing any of that from Hillary Clinton. So I think it comes down to this. I mean, look at it from a percentage standpoint. Uh, in evangelical world, and I keep saying evangelical world because this, this is kind of like the, the world view, the scuttlebutt, if you will, zero percent they believe you're going to get from Hillary Hillary Clinton in the next four years, you're probably going to get 60 to 70, 75 percent from Donald Trump. So you do the math. And the last time I checked the fifth grade math problem, when you see 60 percent is greater than zero percent, you usually go with that as the right answer. Okay. We have uh, sound from Jerry Falwell Jr. Uh, mm -hmm. yesterday talking something related to this. Take a look. If these things happened, would you still support him? Would you still vote for him if these things happened? I can't happened? answer a hypothetical. I can't answer. I can't answer a hypothetical question. You're saying if, if he murdered somebody, would I forgive him? That's like asking. Well, these these are allegations. These are women that. saying it with their names. So yes, I'm giving you a hypothetical because these women are coming forth and telling their story, and he says it isn't true. But I, I'm saying to you, if what they say is true, does Jerry Falwell Jr. vote for Donald Trump? I'm going to vote for Donald Trump because I believe he's the best qualified for the, to be president of the United States. And I'm not going to say anything to besmirch the character of any of these women. It's the heat of, a, of an election. It's, it's four weeks away from Election Day. And it's, everybody's in a frenzy. And so it's, we have to keep that in mind. David Brody. <laughs> David Brody, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even sure. Uh, here, here's the dot, dot, dot part of it. Look, at some point, uh, there does become enough water in the boat to where it will sink. I mean, right. I, that's with any politician. I don't think there's any question about that. Though Donald Trump has put a lot of water in the boat, and it's not sinking, and there's a reason for that. Uh, but look, I, I think one of the things that is in Donald Trump's favor here is that he can play the mainstream media card, because uh, these revelations are not coming out in uh, 
August or four months ago or five months ago. They're coming out three, four weeks before a general election day. And I think that plays well in his narrative of, hey, look, it's all against me. Everybody's against me. And, and I think that plays well with evangelicals. Mm. Okay, David Brody, thank you very much. Thank you, Casey David. Hunt, thank you as well.